Good morning, Bellheads. Okay. All right. We had an interesting day in the park because it was 33 degrees when we got to the park when it feels like a 27. Uh, so we kind of had the park to ourselves, but there were a couple, there, there actually were a couple of people in the park. And as per last time we were in the park and it was below freezing, um, the Blue Jays came out to play. And since I have a new phone and I still, I'm still not comfortable, you know, with the camera, it was kind of frustrating. Um, and, but there were more squirrels than there were last time. So it was a fun day. It was a fun day in the park. And now I get to see if I got any decent pictures at all. Oh, and we have this super, this is the second time we've seen it. So there's a couple of different kinds of woodpeckers that live in the park. And there's this one particular one shaped like a dove with a, with that soft head. They don't have the crest, but just, the, but it's red and they will take the peanuts. But what we have discovered, because we've seen it twice now, is Tom will throw the peanut. The woodpecker will knock it out of the air because there was an audible crack when the, when the woodpecker hit the peanut. And then it'll grab the peanut from the ground and fly off. And we were just like, so you'll take the peanut, but only if you can knock it out of the air. All right, that's weird. But hey, you know what? Nature's fun. So, all right. It is March 12th. Our, to our title is, I express the glory of God. And our quote is, now is the child of humanity glorified and God is glorified in them. If God be glorified in them, then God shall be, shall also glorify them in God's self. All right. And that is John 13, 31 and 32. And you better believe I gender neutral, neutral that. <laughs> okay. Cause if you go read it in the Bible, it doesn't say it, I gender neutral that. All right. Um, perhaps this is one of the most profound thoughts Jesus ever gave to the world for it really tells us that when humanity is glorified in God, then God is glorified in humanity. And it means exactly this. Life is a mirror to each one of us. And as we see the glory of God in this mirror, so shall this mirror reflect back to us that same glory. For Jesus said that if God be glorified in them, then God is also glorifying them in God's self. So so shall the image and its reflection come one, even as the child or even as the parent and the child are one in glory, or maybe that's God and the child are one in glory, in honor, in majesty, and in might. No more exalted concept of divine union could possibly be given than this. Today, when I glorify myself in God, I glory, glorify God in me. For I am in God and God is in me. And as God is glorified in me, so I am glorified in God. I do give thanks for this intimate and complete union of my soul with its center and its source. And I do recognize in myself and in others the glory of this incarnated God. Realizing that the one life it, without and within, consciously uniting with it, I proclaim its presence in everything. Knowing that there is no great and no small, I proclaim its presence in the smallest ways as well as the greatest. In all my, affair, all my affairs shall reflect the glory and the power and the majesty and the might of the infinite spirit. And all that I do shall proclaim God's love, God's life, and God's light. Now is the child of humanity glorified and God is glorified in them. I am the child and God is glorified in me today. All right. So what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is Ernest and Raymond asking us to be willing to look in the mirror and see God looking back at us to recognize that the reflection that we are looking at in the mirror is a reflection of God. 
It's not the sum and total of God. It is a reflection of, and dare I say, a splinter, a splinter, because we are part of a divine whole. But how does it make you feel to look in the mirror and to think that that's a reflection of God looking back at you? How does it make you feel to look in the eyes of people that you love, people that you like, people that you don't like, and, and realize that that is God looking back at you? That is a reflection of God. How does it make you feel to look in the eyes of a four-legged like a pet, or if you live on a farm, uh, one of my coworkers is cow crazy, uh, which is a good thing. She's marrying a rancher. Um, you know, how do, how would it make you feel to look in the eyes of a cow and see that that, that is God looking back at you? Um, and would it change the way you move th through the world? How would it make you feel to realize that when you are looking at trees, that that is you know, that's, I don't know that trees can look back at us, but you know, that you are looking at a reflection of God. If I think about it that way, and actually I frequently do, it, it does, it, it makes me want to walk more gently through the world. Um, it, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, he passed recently, uh, <clears throat> had a saying about, walking as if your feet were kissing the earth. And that's kind of the way it is, you know, that if, if everywhere I look, that's a reflection of God looking back at me, or that's a reflection of God that I am seeing. Um, it, it does make me want to deal more gently with the environment. Uh, it makes me want to deal more gently with animals. Uh, it makes me want to deal more gently with people that I may not necessarily get along with. You know, I may not see eye to eye with them, but you know, I want to recognize that they are, that they are a beloved child of God. I don't have to agree with them. I can think that they're completely wrong, but that's still a child of God looking back at me. Um, and it definitely goes a long way to activating my compassion. So, uh, hmm. All right. This is what I'm thinking about. And I express the glory of God. <laughs> I mean, that's the title. It, it kind of makes me go back to that idea of don't tell me about your God, show me your God. And I want the words that I say, the actions that I take to reflect the God that I believe in. And I, I honestly do feel sorry for some people when I hear what they say, because it tells me about the, the, the God that they believe in. And it tells me that I don't, I don't want to believe in their God. I don't want anything to do with the God that they believe in. I don't want the God of their understanding. So, um, and it does make me feel sorry for them. And the best that I can do is treat them to know that they are, that, you know, that they're beloved child, children of God, and that God isn't that old white man with a book sitting on a throne, that God is a patterning intelligence, that God is a power, that God is a well of love. So... All right. Okay. So I'm going to try, I'm going to go back to that John quote, John 13, 31, 32. Um, now is the child of humanity glorified and God is glorified in them. If God be glorified in them, God shall also be, shall also glorify God, God in themselves. No, God shall also glorify them in God's self. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes it's a challenge to gender neutral. But as a woman, I don't want to be left out, so I'm going to do it. 
And Ernest would be to totally okay with it. Perhaps this is one of the most pro profound thoughts Jesus ever gave to the world. For it really tells us that when God, when people are glorified in God, then God is glorified in people. So. And it means exactly this. Life is a mirror to each one of us. And as we see the glory of God in this mirror, so shall this mirror reflect back to us the same glory. When we look in the mirror and we see God looking back at us, when we can look in each other's eyes and see God looking back at us. I mean, I can't ask for anything more than that. Because when you can see that, it will change the way you make decisions. It will. All right. For Jesus says that if God is glorified in Jesus, then God shall also glorify Jesus in God's self. So it's like, all right. I really want to go back and read that in context now. So shall the image and its reflection become one, even as the, even as God and Jesus are one in glory, in honor, in majesty, in might. Hmm. So shall the image and the reflection become one, even as G the, uh, even as God and Jesus are one in glory. Okay. I mean, Jesus was, Jesus is the ultimate example because Jesus came into the world knowing exactly who he was. He knew that he was a beloved child of God. And he knew that whatever he asked in faith, believing that God would do anything that he asked. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that he also said to, to, to each of us, he said, look, if you believe it, God will do it. So believe it and believe it in love and, you know, believe it in alignment with, because you are born in, 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 in this power you inherit. It's, it's your divine inheritance. Okay. Hmm. Jesus. He's the divine example, not the divine exception. No more exalted concept of divine union could possibly give, be given than this. Okay, so it's a very short paragraph. And then he's got a long uh, power, you know, the affirmations. So if any of these were, resonate with you, great. If not, then, you know, change the words until they do. Uh, today, then, I glorify myself in God and I glorify God in me. Because I know who I am. I recognize who I am. Um, for I am in God and God is in me. And as God is glorified in me, so I am glorified in God. I think maybe... I, maybe what I'm doing is where I'm, where I'm actually kind of fighting this is what does it mean to glorify? <laughs> and that may be my issue. It's like, maybe I need to go and look up the definition of glorify and see what that definition actually is. And once I have decided what glorify, what glorify means, then I can, then I, then it may be easier for me to hold this concept. Cause I think I have a slightly skewed idea of what glorify means. Um, and I, so I'll explain to you what I mean by, uh, slightly skewed, um, because frequently glory can be perceived as unearned, as unearned, which I think in this, that's true, um, uh, because it's granted, it is granted. It's a grace. interesting. I'm going to have to think about that. Maybe that if you are struggling with this the way I clearly am, then that's what you want to do. Go back and, uh, and, and look up the definition of glorify. Um, and maybe go back and look at the definition of glorify 2000 years ago. <laughs> it's like, what was the word? Because the word awful means something different now. Um, 
if you put that E in it, it means something completely different than when you don't have the E in it. So interesting. Just something to think about. I do give thanks for this intimate and complete union of my soul with its center and its source. And that is about recognizing where I come from, where you come from. We didn't come from nothing. We came from God. And we will not go back to nothing. We will go back to God. And I do recognize in myself and in others the glory of the incarnated God. Maybe I want to change the word. Because this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes the words don't resonate with you. So maybe I'm going to try this out and see how it feels. And I do recognize in myself and others the grace of the incarnated God. Yeah, it hits a little differently. Realizing the one life without and within, consciously uniting with it, I proclaim its presence in everything. There is nowhere God is not. Knowing that there is no great and no small, I proclaim its presence in the smallest as well as the greatest. Again, there is nowhere that God is not. In all my affairs, and that's another thing, that, that nothing's too big and nothing's too small for God. It's like, take him your mundane prayers as well as your big requests. Or take God your mundane prayers as well as your big requests. All of my affairs shall reflect the glory and the power and the majesty and the might of the infinite spirit. And all that I do shall proclaim God's love, God's life, and God's light. And that's what I'm talking about. Show me your God. Don't tell me about your God. Show me your God. Your words, your actions, your life should reflect the God that you believe in. Now, as the child of, oh, all right, because here's what I think. I think that this quote is, now is the Jesus, now is Jesus glorified, and God is glorified in Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Son is in, in, in here. Now is the son of man glorified and son is capital S. So now is the child of humanity glorified and God is glorified in them. I am that child and God is glorified in me. All right. And that, like I said, that child, that's it's, it's a capital. Use that as a capital. I am that child. I am that child of God and God is glorified in me. So. All right. Woof! <laughs> every now and again, every now and again, he'll throw it in there that makes me work for it. And I'm not sure I've got this one. I think this one's going to be one that I'm going to have to come back to. Um, and that's good. That's good. If they were all easy, then there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to grow. Um, the mission today, should we choose to accept it? Well, I mean, let's go with the title. Let's express the glory of God today. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to express the glory of God. But really, the mission is to, is to figure out what that means to you. What does it mean to you to express the glory of God? And I will tell you that for me, it is about... Um, the, the, the compassion in my actions and the compassion in my words and the kindness in my words and the kindness in my actions. That is how I express the glory of God because that is the God that I believe in. It is, you know, the love. Um, and in that kindness, compassion, and love, the word no exists. Because people get this idea of that when you go into kindness and compassion and love, that you should always say yes, no, because that's not loving, kind, and compassionate to yourself. All right. Um, so love, kindness, and compassion. The word I would use in describing the God of my understanding is balance. 
So, all right. Which then brings me to the spiritual practice of practicing love, kindness, and compassion on yourself to create that habit, to create that default setting, to create that instance where the first thing that you think of that happens is loving, kind, and compassionate. So no matter what happens, that's the kind of response that you can have. And you can have it for yourself and you can have it for everyone. Uh, and that's how we create a world that works for everybody. Um, and I'm a hot mess today and it's okay. So I'm going to get off of this thing. So as I do that, I'm going to encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body. I'm going to encourage you to get some bright light. First thing this morning, it was really good to see. The, I know it was cold this morning, but it was really good to see the sun. It was really nice to be in the sunshine. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to drink plenty of water, which I have not done this morning. So I need to go do that and open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. And sometimes that breath of heaven is a passage in a book that makes you go, hmm, I don't think that word means what I think it means. And if I want to get the fullness of this understanding, I'm going to do some more work. All right. Sometimes the breath of heaven is a call to learn. And sometimes the breath of heaven is roses. It is what it is. All right, beloveds, you are absolutely wonderful. Have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, an engaging day, a monumentous day, an enchanting day, a magical day, a fan, a a words flowing easily off of your tongue day. That's a selfish one on my part. A colorful day. A restful day. A productive day. A get things done day. A good day. And if that's too much pressure, simply have a day. Because you are enough, just as you are. You are a beloved child of God in whom which God is well pleased and God is glorified. All right, beloveds, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved always, 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 always. Um, if you need us, we're here on the social medias. Um, we are Creative Life Spiritual Center or Creative Life Spark. I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias. Uh, you can always email info at creativelife.org and that will bring you to uh, the constant contact. All the links to all of the book studies that we do are there. So I am going to go and practice because I get to do my first wedding today. I'm very excited. So take care of yourself and I will see you soon.